we need to have some backgrounder on uh, chapter 2 because of the instruction set. But uh, chapter 4 is more on the design of the processor, but in order to design the processor, we need to understand, uh, of course, the instruction set architecture. So we're just going to breeze through this uh, uh, chapter. Right? But basically, the concept is the same as that in ComSci 131. Right? So you have a lot of instructions, the size, etc. So this is leg V8. Bakit leg V8 yung processor name? Kasi yung original ay ARM V8. Actually, leg V8 naman. Ewan mo yun, yung author yun. Okay, so the instruction set uh, for the leg V8 basically contains the list of instructions. Okay? Uh, so leg V8, basically opposite ng arm, the leg. Okay? Uh, okay. Uh, in this uh, <coughs> in this instruction architecture, okay, so you have this particular add instruction. So unlike in the x86, the add instruction has two operands, right? Two red two operands. Whereas in the leg V8 arm architecture of the arm. You have three operands, meaning uh, the the addends will be B and C, and then the result will be placed to A. Okay, so this is uh, a design principle. Uh, simplicity favors regularity. Right? So, if you if you can make the instructions look the same, the instruction format look the same or standardized, then that's better because it's simple. Okay, and uh, it's nice. Okay, and it's easy to implement actually at the hardware level. Okay, I said oh, last time that ARM is a reduced instruction set computer, RISC, whereas the x86 is a CISC, okay, complex instruction set computer. I'll show you this later. Okay, and uh, this is just an example. Uh, you know this in 131 how the C code is converted to the corresponding assembly code. So this is the assembly code for leg V8, basically standard format, okay? Uh, register operands in this, in, in the design of the processor for leg V8, of course, we need to know how many registers are there in the register, in the uh, processor, right? So here, leg V8, this is version eight of ARM, so it has actually, it's actually a 64-bit machine, and it has 32, 64-bit register, okay? So, the register file. So, meron uh, 32 na ang bawat size niya ay 64-bit, okay? And uh, for the design principle, the smaller is faster, okay? So, let's just the idea. And these are the register names, okay? For the leg D8, uh, overview lang, okay? And then, uh, okay, so you have here, uh, this uh, C expression, how it is converted into uh, compiled leg V8 code using the standard format, add, add instruction, and using the register name. So, ibig sabihin nito, yung X20, yung laman ng X20 register, and yung laman ng X21 register, pag inad mo, yung result niya, ilalagay niya dito. Unlike sa X86, move AX, BX, AX plus BX, result sa AX. Right? That's the idea. But here, this is not the case. This is the format. Three operands for the hand instruction. Okay? For the memory operands, uh, for the memory, okay? so uh, this is how it's done. Uh, how you, you reference memory area in, in uh, memory addresses in leg like V8. So this is the load instruction. Okay? When you say load from memory, from memory to a register. Okay? This is the syntax. This is a register, and this is a uh, immediate value or number, an offset. Okay? So, we said yung value ng yung base address ay nasa x22 na register plus 64 yung contents ng memory location na yun ilalagay mo sa x9 na register. You get the idea? And, uh, the store instruction, SPR, pag pinanggal niyo yung U, U is for unscape, load, register, store, register. So, yung opposite naman, yung contents ng X, X9 na register, ilalagay mo sa memory location, 
reference by the, the content, yung base address ay nandito sa X32 na register plus the 96 na offset. So, please take note of this. So, this is another class of instruction. Memory reference instruction, load and uh, store. Okay, so, something like that. Okay? So, of course, you know, it's already a uh, memory. Okay? So, immediate operands. So, the add instruction accepts three parameters. In this example here, you have registers x22, x22, and the immediate value 4. Kumbaga, reader, uh, number the 4. Okay? So, yung contents ng uh, register x22, i-add mo sa plus 4, ilalagay mo sa x22. Okay? Uh, yeah, make the common case pass, so small cons constants are commons, okay? And pag, uh, usually the compiler, instead na pag alam niya na yung, ano, alam niya na yung actual value, when it generates the instruction, yung immediate code na, immediate value na yung kinalagay niya. Okay, get the idea? Para mas mabilis din na kailangan ng fetch instruction. Okay? So, basically yun lang, yung, ah, uh, ito, uh, Sa 131, uh, A130, tinuro ba yung uh, sign extension? Okay. Uh, <coughs> extension would mean, sa 131, di ba meron kang 32-bit na? Gusto mong gawing 64-bit. Okay. Kasi ang kailangan sa computation ng input ay 64-bit. Kailangan mong gawin sa... So you do that by sign extension. Okay. So we say, yung sign bit niya, so, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, 8, uh, uh, 8 bits siya. Gusto mo siyang gawin 16 bits. So, by sign extension, ito yung sign bit niya. Di-replicate mo lang yan para mag uh, 16 bits. Okay? So, these are the instructions for that. Okay, is that clear? Okay. The sign extension. Now, how do you represent instructions? Okay. So, one of the... Uh, uh, interesting uh, representation is of course you have a fixed length instruction word. Okay? Diba yung program counter contains the points to the address or contains the address of the next instruction to be executed. Pag na-fetch na yung instruction na yun, ilalagay yun sa tinatawag na instruction word. So yung instruction word is usually is fixed here as 32 bits. Fixed size siya. I'll show you later, example. And small number of formats uh, basically uh, provides regularity. Okay? So, 32-bit fixed length yun. Okay? And we'll show that later. Okay? So, I th and uh, now leg V8 has several types of instruction format. Uh, R format, D format, and I format. But in the in chapter four, we're going to discuss the R format. Okay, ano yung R format? So this is the instruction word. Okay, so kung standard yan, uh, the opcode kung ano yung dalawin niya, the instruction which is eleven bits. RF is a uh, register, five bits. Bakit five bits yan? Bakit yung field nato ng instruction word ay five bits? Register siya. Kasi, so how many possible register? Register numbers can be placed here. 2 to the 5. So, pag 2 to the 5, 32. Ibig sabihin, since merong 32 registers yung leg V8, kaya niya na-represent dito sa field na to. Nung opcode. Ah, no, instruction board. You get the idea? And then you have the shift amount. Okay. So, uh, basically, you can use that for uh, uh, shifting bits, right? And then another register here, right? And then another register here. Right? So, as shown in this example, right? So, you have the add instruction. How is this, how is this represented in this format? So, uh, if you use the binary representation, base 2 and base 10, so, ito yung itura niya. For base uh, base two, ito yung isura niya. Okay? So, uh, the opcode, okay? ito yun, uh, x9, okay? ito yun, uh, 
then uh, this one for the uh, wala you have one unit sheet amount and then you have uh, the RM and then you have the RE destination okay and for the hex representation normally you must modulate another unit sa hex so uh, in group mo lang for four bits so you'll get to be able to uh, Okay. So, ito pa na yung, ano, uh, this is 21, okay, 21, 29. So, yung destination yung dulo. Okay. So, ito lang yung representation. So, 21, so, okay, 20, so, tapos 9, ito, 0, wala tayong sheet. So, ito yung representation ito, at instruction. Okay? So, yeah. So yun lang. Basically, ang requirement for uh, for this uh, para maintindihan niyo yung discussion natin sa part four. Okay. So to illustrate this, uh, let's open two windows. So I have here a Raspberry Pi. So Raspberry Pi uses uh, an ARM processor. Okay. So this one is an ARM uh, version 7, but the book discusses ARM version 8. So this is actually a 32-bit machine. So you see here the specs, okay. four cores. Okay. Uh, arms the vendor and this is the model of uh, the arm processor okay? and these are some of the, the clock rate okay? so you see here the example okay? this is uh, an arm processor uh, and I have the code ink.c here is the C code okay? so uh, we're going to look at the assembly code generated for this C code in the Raspberry Pi, in the ARM assembly. Okay? So we can do that by using this is C minus S in uh, the C. Okay? And uh, we can see that if you have you've taken simply COMSA 131, you'll see the uh, difference between the instruction code. Okay? So this is the uh, main function generated. Okay? So you see the notation. Okay, I just mentioned a while ago about the syntax of ARM. Okay. So, uh, store, okay. pag may you, yun yung unscaled, di ba? Okay. And then add, sub, etc., etc. Okay. So, siguro mas maganda pag makita natin siya sa GDB. So, GCC minus O, uh, GCC ink dot C. And then, pag nara natin yung A dot out, wala yan. So, we GDB A dot out. Okay. And we uh, set a breakpoint. Okay. This as slash our main. Okay, so this is the uh, code that will be generated, uh, that will be executed by the R processor. Okay. So you see uh, uh, the register numbers, right? then the instruction for the stack, the suit instruction. So stack pointer, stack pointer, and the unit value 12, so it's done for uh, stack processing, And I mentioned a while ago that uh, the instruction word, the, the length of the instruction is fixed as 32 bits. So you see here, yeah, fixed yan, lahat yan, pare-pareho, 32 bits, okay? And you see the offset, 4, 8, 12, 16, okay? So that's regularity. Now, if you compare that to the x86, which is the <coughs> okay, so you see the difference between uh, the two, right? Okay? So, for the x86, 
the full instruction will require this number of bytes. Uh, the full instruction will require this number of bytes for the instruction. Right? So that's why the x86 is a complex instruction set. Wala siya yung concept ng regularity or simplicity. Right? So that's just an important uh, thing to remember when talking about computer architecture. Okay. Uh, ano yung difference ng ARM, ano yung difference ng x86. Okay, so I hope uh, this is as, a, as an aside so that you get an idea ano ba talaga yung difference ng dalawa. Okay. And in the context of the operating system, let's say Linux, okay, so Linux is running bo on both machines despite uh, having different uh, architectures at the low level. It's still Linux that is running. Okay? So, yeah. So, with that, we, I think we can move now to chapter 4, which is actually the main topic, okay? <coughs> which is basically designing the processor, okay? So, uh, this will be the main uh, instructions that we're going to implement in this uh, example, uh, this architect in this design, uh, design chapter. So, load, load, store, uh, the arithmetic logical instructions and uh, in the book this is actually uh, C B uh, Z by right? C B Z. Okay. So in the instruction execution, uh, okay. So from the quiz, ito yung sabi ko, the A L U is book is used in all of these instructions, as you will see later. Okay. So this is the uh, general overview of uh, the CPU. So, meron mga uh, foundations. You, you will need some foundation concepts from digital design, right? But you can have basically uh, the program counter here, the PC, okay? And then once the instruction is fetched, okay? So the instruction will be fetched from the memory, and that instruction will be passed on, will be interpreted to determine the operation. So you have a register file here, here. And then you have the ALU for determining the operations and the, uh, in case you're doing some uh, uh, store, storing to the memory or retrieving data from the memory for the computation, you will need access to the memory. Now this one, as I said last time, is still incomplete. So we need to introduce another circuit component called multiplexers, okay, to be able to select which input to choose from. Okay. And then this is the final result. Okay. So uh, this is an incomplete uh, uh, design. Okay. Now one interesting observation here is why is it that there are two memories here? One for the instruction and one for data. Okay. Bakit? Bakit dalawa? Okay. The main reason is because we want to be able to perform to execute an instruction in one clock cycle. Kung baga, isang, one clock, isang clock cycle lang, na-execute mo na dapat yung instruction. Kasi kung isang memory lang sila, although ideally, sa isang chip lang siya, okay, uh, pag magkasama sila sa isang memory lang, yung instruction sa kadata, dalawang, uh, hindi mo pwedeng i-accomplish yung one clock cycle na instruction execution. Okay? So that's why in this design, there are two memories, one for instruction and one for data because we want to execute instructions in uh, one clock cycle only. Okay? So again, the processor contains two main components. You have the data path and you have the control unit. Okay? So the data path is involved with the computations, whereas the control units will determine who goes where. Okay? Etc. Etc. What operation to perform? Okay. So we discuss about the logic design. Uh, two types of elements. Basically, uh, we have combinational, which does nothing, and we have uh, sequential, which stores information. So actually, in a digital circuit, it's just a combination of these two. So you have uh, yung combinational. Hindi siya pwede mag-store ng state. Meron pwede siya mag-perform ng computation. So what you do is sina sandwich mo yung combinational into sequential sequential circuits or sequential elements para 
doon niya kukunin yung input sa combinational, tapos doon niya rin isusulat, i-store yung result sa combinational. So basically, yun yung parang high-level view ng uh, digital uh, devices. Okay? Combination, naka-sandwich yung combinational sa dalawang uh, uh, sequential. Okay? And of course, we have these primitives okay? for the for the uh, different elements. Okay? Okay? I, I think in the lab you're doing uh, BHDL. Okay? So uh, I also have uh, okay? I also have some uh, examples para ma, ma, para hindi lang sa lab ma, ma, ma relate din natin yung ginagawa sa lab. Okay? Uh, VHDL. Okay, so I it seems that there are high introduction to VHDL. Okay. So, so I have here a few examples. For example, the full adder. Right? Uh, full adder uh, is. Uh, have you implemented full adder in the le in the lab? No. So this one here, full adder. Okay? So a full adder is a combinational uh, circuit. Okay? So uh, let's say VIFA that VHDL. So this is the syntax for the full adder. Okay. Uh, A, B, okay. the carry in, okay. and then the output. Okay. And this is uh, how it is implemented. So uh, we will be, actually, yung project you will be constructing something like this. Okay. So you code the components in uh, the uh, VHDL. So usually, there is a test bench. Uh, okay. I don't know if this is boring, boring for you, but uh, I think it's boring actually. VHDL, but you have to learn it. Full other BH VHDL code. So you have to uh, execute this MDP. Okay. And uh, ano ayong command, guys? Alam niyo ba? Kung kung tandaan niyo pa sa ano sa one one three two uh, R. should be some stop time. Tignan na lang natin yung code. Tignan na natin dito. VCD. Okay. 
then the final stuff is to view the waveform. Okay. So essentially, ganito yung gagawin niyo sa, ano, sa 132. Uh, most of the topics we will be done something like this. Uh, uh, result. Then you just add the uh, components and uh, you see the waveform, right? So this is uh, important because uh, well, it shows you the <coughs> different values, right? at particular uh, points in time, okay? So, 1 plus 1, okay, carry in, see out, and uh, carry out, and then sum, okay? So, siguro, mas maganda kung gagawa lang kayo ng script para one-liner na lang yung gagawin nyo for building, for testing uh, these uh, 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 things, okay? So, that's just one implementation. Gusto ko lang, ang purpose ko lang dito is ma-inculcate nyo sa isip nyo kung paano ini-implement yung, ano, yung uh, uh, mga components na ginagamit sa pag-design ng processor. Okay? Kasi yun yung kulang nyo sa, sa, ano, sa, sa 132 is hindi nila nare-relate yung concept na yan. From the instruction set up to the digital design and yung mga high-level concepts. Okay? So yun, wala pa yung clock. Okay? Wala pa yung clock. Ano lang yun? Parang this just, that is just a combinational uh, circuit is full other okay this one here okay so you can also have multiplexer you can just check out the the github repo okay and then you have a full alu here with the different operations okay so sequential elements ito na ngayon yung nag store ng state so sabi natin usually you have uh, the clock here that describes the operation so itong range na to this is called uh, one the period okay one clock cycle okay so uh, this is the period and uh, edge triggering ang, ang tawag kay ibig sabihin uh, so may input ka dito tapos usually sa, sa isang state element magsusulat ka dyan tapos magre-read ka dun sa other end okay? so kung ano yung sinulat mo dito after some time yun din dapat yung marireed mo okay? so dito ngayon ang triggering example is the question is kailan may susulat dun sa kabila yung, ano, yung nakuha mong input Okay? So you, you do that at the uh, from uh, uh, positive or low to high edge uh, uh, edge part ng clock. Okay? For example, may pumasok dyan na D. Okay? At this point, uh, positive yan at uh, low to high. Okay? So sa kanya isusulat dun sa Q yung uh, result niya. So of course, there's, there will be this uh, delay. Okay? There will be this delay, but the point here is it's a positive trigger, okay? low to high. Okay? Dun niya isusulat yung uh, content. So basically, this can be treated as a memory, okay? as a memory or a register. Okay? So when you stop dyan, nagdaan, pag nag positive edge trigger, uh, pag nag positive edge in transition, sulat na. Okay? So bakit kailangan ng ganito? Bakit kailangan sa start ng design ay ano, ay mag-agree ka na agad dun sa mechanism ng pagsulat sa register. Okay? So, to do that, uh, the main reason is for synchronization. Okay? Para consistent ka sa binabasa mo dito, yun din yung inex... Uh, kung baga, supposedly, yun yung inex expected mo na makukuha mo based dun sa input. Okay? So, that's why you have to... Uh, you have to decide at, at the start kung ano yung triggering element, kung kailan siya magsusulat. Okay? So, for some registers, so, normally, by default, habang may basta may clock yan, may store sa dyan. Right? Masusulat siya. Pero, there are instances na uh, meron kina ng, ano, ng write control. Right? Wherein you only update uh, on the clock edge when the write control input is one. So, ang main difference na is you added another input. So, isusulat mo ba o hindi? Right? So, the idea there is uh, there are instances in the instruction execution of saan hindi mo naman kailangan isulat okay? yung input doon. Okay? Kung bakong ano yung nandun, nandun na, yun na yung nakukuha niya. Okay? Hindi mo i replay So, see here, for example, the positive uh, edge, okay? naka-on yung right, so we perform the right. 
Now, at this point, you see that this is also a positive edge. However, the right bit is off. So, you do, you do nothing. Okay. But the next positive edge, naka-on na siya, then you write. Okay. So, it's a form of control because sabi natin sa processor, uh, you have data path and control. To be it, kailan mo, mayroon mga instruction na kailangan i-store mo yung instruction or meron naman ay yung data or meron naman hindi mo i-store. So, you need to have this uh, right. Parang switch lang to on off. Okay? So, this is what uh, I was talking a, a while ago. Okay? So, the combinational logic transforms the uh, data okay? and then sinusulat niya yan. Okay? So, you have here the clock cycle. So, ito yung isang clock cycle, sana naman, sabi ko na isang clock cycle lang, dapat makopit na yung instruction. Right? So, you have the state element, maybe register or memory, and then you perform the operation, okay? and then you output the result. Okay? So, in one clock edge. Okay? You get the idea? So, parang sa yung pinaka top level view ng isang computer, or ng isang processor. Okay? And kung halimbawa yung state element na to, pareho lang naman ng state element na yun, you can further simplify this. So, state element, perform the operation, go back. Okay? Get idea? So, yung, yung loop na yan, every clock cycle, every clock cycle, yan, iikot-iikot lang dyan yung execution ng, ng computer, ng processor. Okay? But, ang mga yung later is we're going to zoom in into the top, high level view of the Okay? So, we're going to uh, build the data path as shown earlier by uh, incrementally or yeah, incrementally building each component, right? So, as I mentioned, data path is the element that processes data and uh, addresses in the CPU. So, you have registers. Uh, yeah, we have the different elements like registers, functional, functional units, registers, adults, boxes and memories, right? And ito yung gagamitin natin na instruction. So, we're going to focus on the three classes of instructions. You have arithmetic and logical, uh, memory reference, and branch instruction. Subset lang ng instruction set. Okay? Paano natin, given that those instruction set, uh, those instructions, how do we implement them in the processor? Okay? Tapos, ang gagawin natin, separate natin sila so, let's start with the instruction fetch. What do we mean by instruction fetch? Okay. So, the instruction fetch, uh, pag nag start ng mag-tick yung clock, okay. the instruction fetch, as mentioned, is kailangan mo ng program counter. Okay. So, the program counter contains the address of the next instruction to be executed. Saan ba ba sa akin yun? Okay. That will be read from the instruction memory. So normally, meron ka uh, read address dito. So in this example, you have the uh, uh, set of registers, right? So as a new program counter dyan, if we this as, so nandito yung kanyang program counter, right? So ibig sabihin, yung value ng program counter ay nandito. Ah, uh, yung value na ito, and then, hahanapin niya yan sa memory. So, this is the memory address. Okay? So, yan. This is the, this part. Okay? So, nandun yung address na yun. Ito yun. Okay? Now, pupunin mo yung instruction doon. Okay? So, the instruction, as shown here, is this one. Okay? Nakuhaan ko dito niyo yung idea. So, ito yung address, ito yung value ng program counter, tapos ito yung instruction na 32 bits na kanina na sinabi ko. Okay. And ito yung ibubuga niya dito. Okay. Now, after that, pag-execute mo yun actually, ang 
ang mangyayari is, kung nag-endline na kumamaya, i-execute yung instruction na yun. And usually, ito, yung program counter, okay? So, ang nakalagay dito ay 3D0, okay? So, ang mangyayari, kung nag-execute yung instruction na yun, halimbawa, ito yung 3D0, and then plus 4, This is an other 3D0 plus 4. Ano mangyayari? 3D4 na dapat yung next instruction pag nag-NI uh, ako. So, if I use NI and then I this as yung program counter niya will now be 3D plus 4. You get the idea? So, that's the instruction fetch cycle. And if you design that, ito yung ngayon yung mangyayari. So, you start with the instruction fetch. So, di-design ako ng computer. Uh, meron akong program counter, which is basically a register, okay? as shown there. And then, uh, ito yung magiging design niya. Basta, meron akong instruction memory. Okay? Get the idea? Okay. So, this is the instruction fetch. The next one is, uh, okay, the uh, adding. Okay, the adding of uh, two numbers. Okay? So, kanina, we discussed the uh, R instruction. Okay? So, sabi natin, an example of the R instruction is yung add. Okay? Add, tapos, uh, pwede ko tayo dito. Add X1, dibawa, X1, this is register 1, X2, X3. So, kung gaya mong ganyan, ito yung add and watch, ilalagay mo dyan. Okay. So, anong mga kailangan na, anong mga kailangan mong circuitry para dyan? Okay. So, you're going to need the following circuitry. Okay. The first one is you need to have a register file. Okay. So, meron na dapat circuitry na register file which contains basically the registers. So, remember that in the leg D8 architecture, We have uh, 32 64-bit registers, okay? and in the R instruction, kailangan mong magbasa, okay? So, for example, in this instruction, kailangan basahin po yung dalawang register. So, to implement this, kailangan yung register file mo meron ka way para specify kung saan magbabasa. So, you have read register one. Red register to, which is basically uh, 0 to uh, 31 number para specify kung alin register dun sa register file yung gagamitin mo. You get the idea? Okay. So ito register number na doon. And then, you also need to access a third register, which is called the right register. So that's why you have the right register here. Okay? So, pwede mong sabihin na dito si X2, dito si X3, tapos ito si X1. Okay, get the idea? Okay. And then, as I mentioned a while ago about the D3, uh, the D3 uh, plug, D3 plug, you also need to write the, you, have, you also need to have a control, uh, control operation here. Okay, control signal. Kung magsusulat ba siya, kung mag-reading siya. Pag hindi ito naka-on, Mag-re-read lang siya. Pag naka-on siya, mag-write siya. Okay? Ano yung i-write niya? Yung write data. Okay? So that's why you have here, uh, for this register file, ang inputs niya will be ano yung dalawang red, read register for the artistic format, ano yung write register, ano yung, write, ano yung i-write niya in case na naka-on yung write, bench write. Okay? And then, ano yung output niya? So you have read data, so we show you ano yung nandito, and then read data, ano din yung nandito. You get the idea? Okay, so yun yung ano, yun yung sa R format. And kung halimbawa, add yung instruction, kung add yung instruction, kailangan mo ng KLU. Okay? So yung KLU normally has two inputs, okay? And notice here na meron pa, yung kulay blue, yun yung control. Okay? Yung control yung hit. Yung ALU, pwede siyang maraming operation na gawin. Add, subtract, okay, etc. So, itong 
uh, for bit na input line na to will determine kung ano yung operation na gagawin yun sa AL. Kung halimbawa, 0, 0 yung 0, 0 yung naka uh, 0, 0, 0, 0. May apat na 0. Ang ibig sabihin nun para halimbawa ay add. Or yung 0, 0, 0, 1. Ibig sabihin nun ay sum. Okay? So, yun yung monitoring. So, you need these two components to be able to implement the R format instruction. Okay? So, we're moving, moving forward. Okay? So, meron na tayong fetch. Meron na tayong R format. Okay? Now, this one, let's talk about load and store instruction. So, uh, in implementing those uh, three classes, kailangan dyan din ng load and store. Okay? Ano yung mga operation na kailangan sa load and store? Okay? So this time, we need another component, the data memory. Okay? Doon sa instruction fetch, ang ginagamit natin ay instruction memory. Now in this, we're using data memory. Ano yung kailangan natin sa data memory? So remember, it's a memory. This is a sequential element. Okay? So it stores state. So ano yung input? Kung mag -re read tayo or mag -re tayo, of course, we need to specify an address similar to the instruction memory, right? So the instruction memory also requires the read address. So here, we also need to have the address. And at the other end, you have the read data, which is the content of the memory address. Right? And then we also need, uh, in case we're storing data, we also need the input data that we would like to write on the memory address. Okay? And we need to have uh, two control unit, uh, two control lines that will determine whether are we doing a read or are we doing a write? Are we doing a load or are we doing, doing a score? So this control lines here will dictate kung ano yung gagawin dun sa memory. Okay? And then also we need the uh, sign extension, uh, sign extension component. Okay? Because later, uh, may bawa, uh, so, ang gagawin ng load and store, ang example ng load and store, ang example dito, yung syntax niya, uh, L, time na ba? We have LDR, X1, last na na to. X1, tapos, X2, offset. So, yung LDR, ibig sabihin yan, load memory to register. Okay? So, yung X2, siya yung base address plus yung offset. Sabi ko yung kanina. So, pag na-compute mo na yung base address plus yung offset, yun yung papasok dito. Now, since maglo-load tayo from memory to register, okay? so, magkakaroon tayo ng memory read. Naka-onto, naka off to. Okay. Memory read. So, lalabas na yon yung laman nung na-compute na, ad na, na address, yung laman nun, lalabas dito. Okay. And kung isusulat mo yan sa ano, isusulat mo yan sa register, the register is actually, di ba, 32 bits yung register. Okay. Kaso, yung offset, may limit siya in size. Yung offset, based on sa instruction set architecture, 9 bits lang siya. Okay, yung offset, 9 bits lang siya. Okay, so you need to do some sign uh, extension para ma-compute niya yung proper address dito halimbawa sa memory. Okay, so with that, okay, ito yung mga components para ma-implement mo yung load and store instruction. Okay? So, the only left thing is the branch instruction. We'll discuss this next meeting, but uh, just to give you a brief overview, pag pinagtagpi-tagpina natin yung lahat na yun, i-book, yes, we take this lahat nito. Ito na yung palalabas niya. Yung fetch component, yung load and store, yung R instruction, tapos yung branch instruction. Ito na yung big picture niya. Okay? And notice na ang kulang na lang dito ay yung mga control lines. Okay? Yung mga kung saan ang gagaling yung mga yun. But the entire data path is already made. Okay? In one clock cycle, yung operation na add, uh, yung load, and yung 
branch, conditional branch that are related to implemented Okay? So, basically, that's the uh, discussion for today. Okay? So, please return your, uh, submit your paper, quiz, and uh, we'll continue next.